The first thing you need to know about gender is that it's not the same as sex. If you want to go into that distinction, Marina Shut Up has a great video on it, but the TLDR, sex comes from biology, although that does not mean that it's a binary or clearly understood, and gender is... more. Gender is a state of being, a mode of life, and what exactly that more is, we shall investigate. One of the most famous theories of gender, and where it comes from, is Judith Butler's gender performativism. You may have heard of it. It's the idea that gender is something we perform. It is the stylized repetition of acts through time. Now, some people have taken gender performativism to mean that you can perform whatever gender you like, and that ultimately your gender is a means of self-expression. But interestingly, that's not actually what Butler meant by it. It's not a performance in the way that an actor chooses to perform a role and reads from a script and dresses themselves up. It's performance like performativism, which is a technical term. Let me explain. Some ways of speaking are performative. They don't just communicate something, they also constitute an act. Like, for instance, if you say guilty during your trial, you're not just communicating that you did it, you're also actually instigating a legal process and a whole bunch of other stuff happens as a result of you doing that. Or for instance, saying I do at your wedding, or an umpire saying that's out in tennis. Yes, the speaker is communicating, but they're also performing an action. Butler thinks that one of the things performative speech can do is constitute an identity. The repeated stylized actions that make up your gender aren't an expression of some hidden self. They are the self. She says, Gender performativity is not a matter of choosing which gender one will be today. Performativity is a matter of reiterating or repeating the norms through which one is constituted. Another very important thing that Butler emphasizes is that your gender identity is not constructed by you. The repeated stylized actions that make up your gender are taught to you and enforced. When a baby is born, she says, a performance of it's a boy or it's a girl happens, and the baby can be expected to perform very differently depending on what that assigned identity is. In her famous book of feminist existentialism, Le Deuxième Sex, Simone de Beauvoir emphasizes at great length that those who are gendered male are often expected to maintain very different identities from those gendered female. Just to be clear, Butler is not denying that sexual differences exist. What she's interested in is how some physical differences between people come to acquire such significance, and other physical differences, like hair color or eye color, don't so much. But hang on a minute, I hear some of you saying, are you telling me that all those people on Tumblr who say that their gender identity is something I've never even freaking heard of, are you telling me they're actually correct? Well, yeah. Kind of. Your gender identity is not an expression of anything in yourself, according to Butler. It is yourself, so there's not really any grounds for saying that somebody's doing their gender wrong. In fact, as new social systems are created online, it's perhaps not surprising that we see some gender identities emerging that under different systems would be interpreted differently or actively sidelined. It's actually a point in Butler's favor that as new social systems emerge, we see new gender performances emerging with it. There are two big theories about what gender is and where it comes from. Gender essentialism says that whatever it is to be a gender is ultimately best explained by biology. Sex chromosomes, usually. Social constructivism, on the other hand, says, surprise, surprise, that your gender is socially constructed. If you're very clever, you might have noticed a parallel to the similar debate about what race is, which we've talked about on this channel before. Butler's performativism plays very much to the social constructivist angle, because she thinks that gender identities and all of the expectations and rules that come with them are grounded in social norms. Julia Serrano says that gender performativism is in danger of being a little bit patronizing. It's in danger of overlooking the fact that for a great many people, their gender expression is what feels right for them. It is, in a way, an expression of something inside them. Serrano thinks that both essentialism and social constructivism are incomplete. She thinks that people acting against what essentialism says their gender should be, based on their sex chromosomes, occurs far more frequently than the essentialist can account for. 
The essentialists will say that people with exceptional gender expressions come down to genetic anomalies. But as a geneticist, Serrano thinks they occur far too frequently in the population for that to be true. But at the same time, she says, people with exceptional gender expressions often display them from an early age, supposedly before any kind of social conditioning could have set in. So maybe the social constructivist is missing something as well. The missing ingredient, she thinks, is what she calls subconscious sex, which is how your brain expects your body to be. She thinks trans people can be acutely aware that their subconscious sex does not match their physical body, and therefore the identity that they were assigned on the basis of that body. Whereas cis people have a subconscious sex that does match their physical body, and therefore they don't experience that very painful gender dissonance. Whilst she does think that subconscious sex is a matter of how your brain is wired, she doesn't want to go full gender essentialist on it, because she does think that social conditioning can play a huge role in how you interpret your subconscious Conscious sex. What she's really trying to explain is what she's found as a trans woman, which is that certain kinds of gender expression just feel right. And that feeling right, she says, is a function both of your subconscious sex and the social construction of gendered identities. So as an alternative, she puts forward the intrinsic inclination model. According to this theory, you are intrinsically inclined to some of the kinds of behaviours that make up your gender. If we take gender, which is a spectrum, and graph it against physical sex, which is also a spectrum, we get two overlapping bell curves, just like if we graph height against physical sex. And just like with height, there are certain correlations that we can observe. People with penises tend to be taller and tend to have certain kinds of gender inclinations. But just like with any set of overlapping bell curves, there are outlying cases. The difference between this and the gender essentialist model is that whereas the essentialist would say that the outlying cases are down to genetic errors or anomalies, the intrinsic inclination theorists can say that they're just examples of perfectly normal variation within the human species. Serrano thinks the chief advantage of this model is that it explains both why there are typical cases, most people are in the middle of the bell curves and most people are therefore cis, but also why there are some rarer but still perfectly normal cases. I think Serrano's theory is compatible with Butler's gender performativism. The subconscious sex needn't be a complete self that exists prior to being assigned a gendered identity. It could just be, as she says, natural variation in the kind of gendered selves that feel right. What all this gets at is that, perhaps worryingly, your identity as a gendered being may not be up to you. Serrano thinks that your brain can, and definitely should be allowed to, play a role in shaping your gender. But she, Butler, and de Beauvoir all emphasise that gender is as much object as it is subject. An object that is shaped and acted on by other people, as well as you. What do you think? What is gender? Is performativism on the money? What's your experience as a performer and beer of your gender? Leave me a comment telling me what you think. And for more philosophical videos from me, don't forget to subscribe. This episode, as well as the two that I did on Kant, was filmed in YouTube Space London as part of YouTube's Next Up Creator Camp. So I want to say a massive thank you to all the staff who've helped me move these huge lights and cameras and microphones from studio to studio on this, which has been a very long day of filming. I've been filming for about eight hours now, so I'm gonna go to bed. But if you'd like to support me bringing education to YouTube, then you can find Philosophy Tube on Patreon. Oh, it's been a long day. I'm going to bed. Night night.